It is 6 a.m. on Friday, December 3rd, and I had to stop everything I was doing, which is obsessing over financial markets as usual, to bring you guys this video because I stumbled across an incredible piece that explains what one of the greatest investors of our time is thinking and doing and believing about markets right now. Charlie Munger, in his 90s, lots and lots of wisdom downloaded on what is going on around the world in today's markets. So let's go through this article. So he's 97 years old and he just had this interview with someone in Australia. And here's a quote. Some of the valuations we saw in the dot-com boom were higher, he said, but overall I consider this in the United States market as being even crazier than the dot-com boom, which blew up in 2000. And what he's saying, you know, obviously he's a very conservative, successful value investor. What he's saying does line up pretty well with this tweet that Tavi Costa put out showing software stocks, enterprise value to sales. So the valuation, the market cap of these companies compared to sales. So Munger is absolutely correct. The median enterprise value is almost double what it was back in 2000. And it also lines up with this tweet that Herb Greenberg put out showing margin accounts at brokers and dealers. Okay, so margin accounts, it's kind of a gauge of people taking on more debt to speculate in risky assets, right? If you look at this chart, it is absolutely astronomically high. And you, you can actually look in 2000, right? Tech bubble, crash, 2009, real estate bubble crash. And here we are way back up. One thing I will say about this, because I don't necessarily want to just say that stocks are going to crash. And if you look at this chart, you can see that over time it has gone up exponentially. So yes, there's a frenzy in retail trading activity, but it's also the case that it does steadily move higher over time. It just probably going to revert to its mean at some point. And it does not mean that this will not go higher. Okay, like this could easily double again. There's so much cheap money in the world. There's so much stimulus. When this happens, epic bubbles occur. I just learned that the inflation in silver coins that came out of the Spanish discovery of silver in Latin America, there was an inflation of silver coins flooding the world, right? Because they discovered so much silver in Latin America. That is what fueled the tulip mania, right? So generally, if, if there's an inflation in the money supply, assets go up. We have a huge inflation in the money supply and assets are going up. I'm not calling a top. I don't know when that would be, but I will say that it is, it is a dangerous game if you're piling on stocks at these levels, but that does not mean at all that there aren't still potential Great opportunities long-term. For instance, if you look at the ARC Genomic Revolution ETF, this contains absolutely revolutionary companies in healthcare, such as CRISPR therapeutics and companies that are involved in the gene editing space, right? So it's an absolutely revolutionary space and it's going to change how medicine is done forever. So, you know, think 40, 50 years out and you look at this and you say, okay, ARC Genomic revolution ETF. Yes, it's it's you know has lots of overvalued companies in it, but it's also corrected fifty percent from its all time high. So at some point, you will want to be getting into revolutionary technologies that are going to eat the world and change everything. Also, you have companies like Zillow. You know, Zillow is like the one hundredth most popular website in the entire world. It's disrupted completely the real estate industry is an extremely valuable tool now that people are relying on and there's a really powerful network around it. I just bought a house recently and we knew as much as the realtor did about pretty much the entire real estate market because of Zillow, because there's so much valuable information on it. It's a very, very valuable tool. And you can see here that it's trading at the same level as it did in about 2013. So my point is, I agree with Munger that Stocks are completely overvalued generally, but it doesn't mean they can't melt up higher. It doesn't mean there aren't still opportunities, but it is a dangerous game if you're going to be playing the top of a, of a bubble environment like this, because yes, eventually there will be a nasty 
correction. Munger has been a longtime fan of U.S. tech stocks with Berkshire Hathaway now a major shareholder in Apple. So this is just a really important point that, yes, he sees frenzy, but yes, he's also invested in one of the biggest tech stocks in the world, right? So he's not calling it top. I don't think him and Buffett ever call tops. They just like to hoard cash and buy things when they get cheap. So they're waiting for that opportunity. Here's a little gem. On Friday, he singled out U.S. discount retailer Costco as one of his favorite companies, saying it had the right model and having its customers become members and a strong focus on holding down costs. So that's a good one for you guys if you want to research Costco. This is really interesting. I predict that Costco will eventually become a huge internet player. So that may or may not be priced into the current stock, but if they become a massive e-commerce presence and competitor with things like Amazon and Alibaba, well, that is really cool. It's good to know. You know, he's done his due diligence on that company. Now, here's another really interesting thing he's saying, right? I love the fact we're rapidly reducing the burning of coal and the burning of gasoline and diesel and replacing them with electricity from renewable sources. We talked a lot on the show about how in rapidly crushing the coal and, and gas industries, there's a huge void in the energy that renewable cannot fill and that uranium is the only current baseload power source that can fill that gap. So again, it's interesting that he thinks that renewables can just fill the void of coal and, and gas. Well, I guess since nuclear is considered a green energy, maybe he's considering nuclear there too. Something else Munger said that was really interesting. He hit out at cryptocurrencies and said they should never have been invented. This is, this is absolutely fascinating to me because yes, you can't really value Bitcoin the same way you can value a company that cash flows or real estate that cash flows, but you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater because the metaverse video games that are going on the blockchain and tokens that give you a voting stake in digital universes that have booming economies that are cash flowing and that give you a stake and an ownership right to the, those cash flows. You actually can buy tokens that allow you to invest in metaverses. And when you think of metaverses, think of video game worlds that are all on the blockchain where every piece of data can be bought and sold and owned. And you can buy land and the cars and buildings. You can buy all of that, which are all unique in a digital world and they can generate cash because you have visitors in the digital world, bringing their US dollars, bringing their fiat currency and spending it in the digital world. So if you own those digital assets that are generating that, that revenue, that fiat revenue, and you own a token over that metaverse that gives you a voting stake in that metaverse, you own a share of the cash flow of that digital economy. And so that is a legitimate business. It's as legitimate as owning a share of video game companies that profit from people paying to use it and buying things in game. I found this very, very, very fascinating because he is still extremely bullish on China. Munger said there was less enthusiasm about China in the US than there had been in the past. So I've operated under the thought that it's hard to sleep at night knowing that the state has complete and utter control. And it's very difficult for me to get my head around investing in a totalitarian state that operates under the communist banner. But here we have one of the greatest investors of all time being bullish on China. So almost every capitalist is less enthusiastic about China than they were a year ago, but I am not despairing at all about China. Wow. Wow. He said, I, do, I don't think we're going to have nuclear war. And if we don't have one, I think the only thing to do is get along with China. And I think both China and the United States will be smart enough to see that. Nothing is more important to both countries than getting along with one another. And that's what I think will happen. So I guess he thinks that if we don't go to nuclear war, then Chinese very, very bullish in China, even though they're in the middle of a property collapse, similar to the one in Japan in the 90s that led to a lost decade in stocks. So I still find it very interesting because you could have, could have been bullish in China for the last year for the same reasons and lost a lot of money investing in this, in this country. So 
I'm not saying that stocks aren't, aren't completely oversold and potentially there is value. And yes, they could three, four X, but can you sleep well at night knowing that your money is invested in a very murky political totalitarian system? So overall, a lot of interesting thoughts from, you know, one of the greatest investors of all time. I'll put the link to this article in the description if you want to read the whole thing. I do find it interesting that Berkshire Hathaway is hundreds of billions of dollars in cash given the inflationary environment where cash is rapidly being devalued. And China is an interesting one. I'd love to hear your guys' comments on that. Um, again, he's bullish. He's been bullish. Lots of people have been bullish. I haven't been because it's hard to be comfortable investing in that type of environment. And uh, I think the market gave a big haircut to China because of their collapsing real estate bubble and the corrupt politics. So it's kind of your call. Yes, stocks have crashed. Yes, there could be some deep value, especially if one of the wisest people in the world thinks so. But you make the call. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for listening. I thought this article was, was really fun and interesting, and I had to share it with you guys. Let me know what you think, and stay tuned for more. This discussion is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this discussion should be taken as investment advice. Guests are not compensated for their appearance. Do not base any investment decisions on the information presented.